keynotes. Like, God, not another one of those. Um, but it is, it is full of love and rage and anxiety. You can see the cow looks anxious. This is an anxious cow, people. But it is about a 16-year-old boy named Cameron who's a bit of a slacker. He really does not want to get too involved in life. As he says, he, zero expectations equals zero disappointments. And so he doesn't really engage with life. And then he starts having these sort of strange visions. Things are kind of, he's seeing these freaky fire giants. And he sees this punker angel with a breastplate and fishnets and combat boots whose wings are always spray painted with interesting things. And uh, it turns out that he has the human variant of mad cow disease. And so he is going crazy. And uh, while he's in the hospital, he um, befriends, or is befriended, sort of has a friendship foisted upon him. Uh, this kid in the, in the bed next to him named Gonzo, who is a hypochondriac uh, video gaming dwarf who thinks that everything is going to kill him. And, um, and the angel comes to visit him. Her name is Dulcie. And she tells him that there is a cure for what he has if he's willing to go in search of it for it. And uh, along the way, he needs to save the universe. No pressure. So he sets out on this crazy road trip with Gonzo, his friend, and occasionally Dulcie pops in and has these wild adventures. This novel is based loosely on Don Quixote, so I wanted it to be this quixotic journey. Um, but the, the passage that I'm going to read actually takes place about midway through the novel when um, the, uh, Gonzo and Cameron is the 16-year-old boy's name. Uh, Cameron has snuck out and has ended up at some party at who knows where. He doesn't know how he's really gotten there and now he's kind of stuck at this party and he doesn't know how to get back to the motel where he's left Gonzo so that they can get back on the road and resume their mission. And he happens to bump into a, uh, a yard gnome which begins to speak to him. And it turns out that the yard gnome claims to be um, the Viking god Balder, who has been placed into this enchanted form by Loki, and he's also trying to get back home. So um, they figure out how they're going to get out of there. So this is from chapter 28, which treats of my visit to a keg party and of my chance encounter with the world's grumpiest yard gnome. As a kid, I imagined lots of different scenarios for my life. I would be an astronaut, maybe a cartoonist, a famous explorer or rock star, Never once did I see myself standing under the window of a house belonging to some druggie named Carbine waiting for his yard gnome to steal his stash so I could get a cab back to a cheap motel where my friend, a neurotic death-obsessed dwarf, was waiting for me so we could get on the road to an undefined place and a mysterious Dr. X who would cure me of mad cow disease and stop a band of dark energy from destroying the universe. Five minutes after I've helped him in, the gnome appears at the window again with a big wad of crumpled bills. I'm afraid I'm a bit rusty yet. Grab my legs. I pull him to safety and he presses the bills into my hand. I took the whole of it, $3,000, just to be sure. Whoa. I shove the bills deep into my pocket. I feel kind of bad taking this. Don't. He wobbles on shaky legs toward the yard. His wealth is ill-gotten, and once he dressed me as a hoochie mama, and posted internet pictures on a fetish site called Naughty Gnomes. <laughs> I cannot adequately convey the trauma of it. <laughs> now, the telephone is in the living room by the TV. I've seen cabs here before. County cab, 1-800-333-1111. When you've been taken hostage as much as I have, it helps to pay attention. Thanks. You're welcome. After I make the call, I come out to find the guys who were smoking the J, now crowded around Balder. Hey man, I'll bet this little guy would make a good football or target practice. Balder's face is a mix of terror and sheer pissed offness. Given the chance, he'd run these guys through, I bet. I wouldn't do that. The guy closest to Balder shouts, Yeah? Why not? You could kick my ass. Lovely. Gee, I hope we'll be friends forever. No, man, I, I just saw this big dog come and take a piss on him. He jumps back fast, and the other guys laugh and high-five each other. Ah, oh, dude, close one, dog piss! Somebody sticks a head out the door. Yo, they're showing Chainsaw Motel on the late show. Get your sorry asses inside. All right, cannibals, the guys yell and stumble run to the house. Balder lets out the breath he was holding. He bows. That was a nice thing you did. You are indeed noble. With his chain mail and domed helmet, he reminds me of some weird, courtly little knight. Please allow me to read your fortune in the rooms. What? 
The runes, he says, drawing a small leather pouch from his pocket. We from the north use them as tools of protection and divination. Here, draw one. I pull out a smooth stone with a weird R etched into it. Ah, Balder says, Rado, the, tr the rune of travelers, for it means a journey will be undertaken. The journey will be important, and there will be no getting around it. You might need the services of a warrior. I would be happy to ride into battle with you if you chose to take me on your journey. He shoots me a hopeful look. How the hell am I going to explain this to Gonzo? My cab pulls up to the curb and the driver honks once. Okay, here's the deal. I'm traveling with a friend, Gonzo. You have to talk to him too because he already thinks I'm insane and I don't need any more help on that front. Got it? Indeed. We're going to Florida. There's a beach there. I don't know if your ship will be waiting for you or not. I mean, I can't promise anything, but it's a shot. He bows deeper this time. The gods have truly sent a wise one to me. I shall honor your wishes, and I shall make one condition of my own. What's that? You and your friends are not to take any unauthorized pictures of me. I do not wish to show up on your internet page posed in front of any national monuments or next to dubious signage with some obnoxious caption underneath. I've had quite enough of that. His expression is as no fooling as they come. Got it, I say. I lift him in my arms like a baby. On the way to the cab, Balder gives one last look at the cul-de-sac, the weedy yard, the rock garden littered with cigarette butts, the cars lining the block like conformity guards. He gives a small wave, and I think maybe he'll miss this place after all. But then his fingers slowly bend till only the middle one's left standing. 